Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be discussing the plants that I feel everyone should be growing in their backyard, garden, or on their homestead this fall. And if you hang in there with me, I got a bonus for you. All right, we're going to jump right into it. First thing we're going to do is check out the vegetables that I've already started in my greenhouse. And then from there, we'll, we'll go to the plants that I haven't started yet because it's just too early in the season to, to get those started. Okay, so this video I could get long-winded on because I love starting seeds and seedlings. So I'm going to try to get through this and not babble on, okay? So here we go. First thing we have here is collards. If you know me, you know I love growing collards. I'm growing two different types, the Georgia Southern Creole collards and the Top Chop collards. These are an, an heirloom type collard over here. Both of them are fantastic. I'm doing a side-by-side -side comparison to both of them because I've never grown them together before. And uh, I'm looking forward to having a lot of collards for Thanksgiving. Here we have our kales, Charlotte kale and Blue Ridge kale. Both of these, I've grown the Scarlet kale before, but I've never grown the Blue Ridge kale. So I'm looking forward to that. Scarlet, the Scarlet kale is amazing, great on a little side salad or whatnot. I, I love it. Over here, we have my onions that I planted. I did a video the other day about planting uh, onions. And so these haven't germinated yet, but I'm growing four different types. I'm growing a red type. I'm growing a, a Vidalia type. I'm, I'm growing a sweet, or well, two sweet, one sweet and one super sweet type. And then we got calendula right here. I just learned that calendula is more of a fall than a spring uh, plant. So I'm looking forward to seeing those thrive this year. Over here, we have lettuce. I'm growing two different types of lettuce, as you can see. And the main reason why I'm growing two different types is for the, for the color. Um, it's a nice looking color on your salad. This one is a Cherokee lettuce, and this one is a romaine lettuce. Back here, we have Brussels sprouts. Once again, growing two different types. I very rarely grow only one type of something. I like to grow two just in case this year something some a certain type doesn't do well. I don't lose a whole crop of it. And then over here we have broccoli. This is the purple magic. And this is the imperial broccoli. All the seedlings are looking amazing. If you haven't checked out my video on how to grow amazing seedlings, I think the proof is in the pudding right here so far. And um, if you're a beginner gardener, intermediate gardener, what, what have you, if you ever have issues with starting seeds, go check out that video. It's a longer video, about 25 minutes, but it, it definitely lays out all my process of how I start seedlings. Okay, the next thing that I think every gardener should have in their fall and winter garden, carrots. So I'm growing the yellow bunch carrot. The Envy carrot, Valerio carrot, and this is a great, this is a nice, uh, the, the shape on this carrot is, is like the perfect shape. Danvers carrot, this, is, this one also has that real nice carrot shape to it. And then my favorite for flavor is this purple elite carrot. So once again, up north, you may want to not plant your carrots until springtime. Uh, but down here in the south, overwintering carrots is, is a good way to get ahead of the game when it comes time to harvest. You'll be harvesting before anybody else in the spring. You can harvest throughout the, the, the fall and winter as well because um, the way I plant them <clears throat> is I don't plant them in a row. I don't space them out. I uh, plant them in kind of a cluster, and then I thin them as the season goes on. So I'm I'm constantly eating carrots throughout the fall and winter. 
So the next thing I think everyone should have in their garden is garlic. This here happens to be elephant garlic. I grew these last year. I have a bunch still hanging up in the barn, but um, these right here are, it's, you get such a return on investment. I started off with just a small clove and now there's like these huge cloves all around. Same with this one. Uh, if you don't grow elephant garlic, you know, there's all different type, types of garlic. You know, you, I haven't grown the like soft neck, hard neck and all that kind of stuff. But I understand that the process is very, very similar. And so I would recommend garlic in your fall and winter garden. So my bonus is I think everyone should be growing some type of herbs in their fall and winter garden. I kind of have all of my herbs that I'd like already and they're growing right now. They're 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 going to make it through the winter in our southern climate here. A lot of our herbs are perennial and so my rosemary will stay, my um my basil won't won't make it all the way through. My thyme will make it through, my oregano will make it through. So those I already have established plants of them, so I'm not actually planting them right now. But I am planting a herb collection that I got from Hoss. It's one of their premium collections, and it actually has a lot of herbs in there that I've never even heard of. So that's something else that I, I, I really think everyone should be doing in their fall garden is try experimenting with something. Um, I'll put it up on the screen what that collection is and what it consists of. It should be on the screen right now. But um, a, a lot of people, uh, they, what's the word I'm looking for? They depend on their spring and summer garden. Uh, their spring and summer garden produces probably 80% of what they will be consuming or selling throughout the year. And a lot of people don't even grow a fall garden. So I recommend, hey, if you got a small space or whatever, just try to experiment with the little part of it. You know, if you have a big, large space and you're growing a bunch of stuff, save a little area for an experiment because you should always be trying to, to open your eyes to new and different varieties of things that you should be growing. So there you have it. Those are the plants that I feel everyone should be growing in their backyard garden or on their homestead this fall. If you like the video, please hit the, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Um, also, don't forget to comment below. A lot of people have been commenting lately, and I really, really appreciate the comments. I do my best to reply to everyone. Um, but if I inspired you to maybe grow something that you wouldn't have normally grown this year, please let me know. Um, if maybe you have a plant that you were thinking about and I didn't mention it, I left it off of my list, put it in the, put it in the comments below and, you know, let's get a conversation going. But, um, I really appreciate all the support I've been getting here lately because it's, it's rough on these YouTube streets. Let me tell you, it ain't, it ain't easy, <laughs> but, um, Hey, I'm enjoying it. It's fun. I'm looking forward to this journey and I really appreciate having y'all along, you know, for the ride. But anyway, y'all have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.